Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm hunting hogs with a group of buddies and some top-notch hog dogs. Then I'm getting together with my buddy Phil Wingo, an award-winning pitmaster, to put some wild hog on the grill. Let's get it started. Oh, shit. That was fast. Too fast. Old Swamp Hog. We got dogs on him right now. I mean, we simply just got out the truck. They already got a hog. This is not easy terrain to walk. Whew. You gotta be mad at them to do this. Hopefully they keep the hog bait till we can get there. Almost to the pig. Some of the other hunters got ahead of me. I was trying to get camera turned on. Hopefully there's something to do once I get there. Hopefully we get to see a little bit. Oh, we're close now. Ooh, you hear the pig? I hear him. Oh, they got him now. Bet you to catch them. Alright, here we go. Going into the action. Going right into the action. Oh, you can hear the pig. He's not happy. Holy cow. All right. Okay, we got a pig, y'all. We got a pig. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that, boy. Look at that. Nice pig. Nice pig. We've been here for a total of maybe 10 minutes. Maybe. This marsh terrain is what we had to rush through to get here. It's not easy walking. The dogs did it. try to explain the chaotic scene you just uh, saw. So what we're doing today is hog dogging. My cousin Sean, a couple buddies of his, keep some dogs for hunting hogs. They're different breeds of curs. They've got a couple pits for catch dogs. So what you do is you get to your spot and you release the curs. And the curs get out and roam, locate a hog, run it down and bay it. Baying is when the hog stops running and they keep it in a certain spot. So as the hunters, we wait for the bay to happen. Then we go in. It all happened so fast. It was automatic. So that's why you've seen us rushing and running and jumping through this marsh to get to them. By the time I got there, they had already taken care of the hog. The hunters get close and they release the catch dog, or catch dogs in our case. The catch dogs go in and grab the pig so that he's rendered almost defenseless at that point. Up until that point, he has a good shot of escaping or fighting off the dogs a little bit, depending on the quality of the dogs. These dogs are good, so the hog didn't get very far. So you release the catch dogs, the catch dogs go in, grab the hog, and the hunters come in, flip it over, and if it's a kill hunt, you'll go ahead and kill it at that point. Typically, it's with a knife. You stab it behind the ear like we did today, or sometimes in the vitals behind the front legs. I didn't capture any of that and probably I wouldn't show it anyway. But that was all done by the time I got there. That's how fast it happened. So we already got another one. These hogs love this marsh. They can get in here, bed up, raise their little ones. 
we're maybe 25 minutes into the hunt and got another hog already. But if we don't get them out of here, they'll destroy this more. So you gotta get them. All right, so there go to catch dogs. That's the dog that goes in and grabs the pig so that the hunters can come in behind and roll the pig over. When you got a good set of dogs like this, I mean, it could be all day long. See, pigs all through here. And they can destroy a place like this in a short amount of time. So this is part of the fun right here. We're going to the dogs, but we have no idea what they have. It could be a 300 pounder, it could be a 30 pounder. It's like old Forrest Gump said, you know, you never know what you're gonna get. You might get more than you bargained for on this. <laughs> Good thing I ate my Wheaties this morning. We are burning calories. You know who's burning more calories? Them dogs. <laughs> I kicked him and I saw him go start picking them dogs up. Hey, he got some good teeth on him. So that right there, that's dangerous stuff. You would not believe how sharp those things get. So, we just checked our watches. We've already caught two hogs in 30 minutes. That's ridiculous. That goes to show you how good the dogs are though and how many hogs he has in here. What you think, bro? The dogs did good? Oh, yeah, they did good. We're going back more too. Yeah, did. Southern Heat Kennels. Say it one more time. Southern Heat Kennels. And what y'all do? Hog dogs. Hog hunt. How often? Uh, after deer season, probably every weekend. Just Until about. it gets too hot, huh? We hunt, we hunt in the heat. heat. Oh, yeah? We hunt at night if it gets yeah. too hot. I got you. So what's uh, what makes a good hog dog? Time. What you mean? It takes time to for a dog really to understand everything and get it down pat, and somebody to teach them the right way. Now after a hunt like that, there ain't much else left to do. I mean, what else can you do after a hunt like that? Right? Oh, no doubt. Is it 8 o'clock in the morning yet? Is it 8? I don't know. It might be barely 8 o'clock in the morning, but what else can you do after a hunt like that? You gotta enjoy a cold one. Mm. The taste of victory, my friends. The sweet taste of victory. That was as really about as good as a hog dog hunt gets. In and out and home in time for breakfast. We got the hogs loaded up, cleaned them out, and now, let's get cooking. All right, well them two pigs didn't stand a chance against them dogs, but now we brought out the real big dogs. I got the Pitmasters, award-winning Pitmasters, my buddy Phil Wingo and John Haney, and they're gonna take some of this wild pork and throw it on the pit. And y'all gonna learn a lot about wild pork. Now sometimes if you're not careful with wild pork, you can dry it out real bad. But we're gonna turn it over to these pros and let them show you how to do it. So Phil also owns this line of seasoning called Pork Mafia. And that's what we're gonna be using on it today. We're gonna to be using Memphis mud on this piece of pork. Uh, it's actually not badly trimmed. It's got a nice amount of fat on it. So we're not gonna do any trimming on it. Uh, it looks pretty nice. We're just gonna cover it with the Memphis mud and get it over here on this little PK grill. Now also, also, John builds these pits here. So we're gonna start it on this one, right? Yes. Yeah, and then we're gonna go to that. Look at that mamma jamma right there. I mean, come Fire on. Fire finish. I mean, I mean. So here we go with the little Memphis mud. Now Memphis mud is probably my favorite that he makes and it's got a little bit of a sweetness to it. What's in it? A little bit of honey flakes, uh, smoked paprika, some garlic, a little bit of brown sugar. Mm -mm. But we're gonna coat it heavy. Uh, just because we want flavor all the way on each bite. On pork butts, briskets, uh, bigger pieces of meats, I, I do believe in coating them pretty well. There we go. What Cherry. kind of board is that? Cherry. And why do y'all do that? Just to add flavor to the meat and we go get a smoke from a little the charcoal. Smoky a little smokiness. smokiness. You know. So this is a big roast off of the back leg of one of those pigs. 
and I left the fat on. I didn't trim it off, and it's a good thing I did because Phil actually wants it on there when it cooks. Yes. So didn't have string to tie it up tight, so we're just going to keep it rolled tight here at the. Uh, so it's going to be an indirect, indirect grill. grill. Yeah. So how long will you do that for? It's going to be a probably good two, hour. 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 And we might have it an hour on the other grill. Yeah. And how, where, where would you get a board like that? Uh, most lumber supplies, yeah. you can pick up a piece of board or a grill stores. They have a little grilling board you can use. A lot of times you'll put a piece of fish on it, but uh, we're just using it for the smoke flavor right. today. Flavor. So what I'll do is I'll shut this end off and force the heat to come across to this end where the meat's at. So, so like an indirect, drawing the heat to it. Yeah, you're right. It's science, y'all. It's science. I'm telling y'all, this is going to be a good one. So, we're doing the wild pork. That's wrong. We also did some chicken yeah, yeah. wings. I don't, oh, I, and some I don't ribs. know him personally, but I know that. So, our friend Safina inside, she won't come out. She won't let me put her on film yet. But she made this barbecue sauce with figs and kumquats. Let me just tell y'all, it's a Thursday afternoon in New Orleans, and she threw that together. You know it's going to be good. You know, you already know. That pig's been on about an hour and a half now. Let's have a look at it. Let it go some, I gotta get some more charcoal. I'm just gonna roll it over real quick. I'm gonna text Oh, oh look at the bark on it. It's looking good. Yeah, so tell me what you like about that, Phil. What, what so I like the color that's coming out on it. And uh, the little bit of dark spots is some sugar caramelization. And it's just gonna be tasty stuff. Now, we put it on the PK grill and we covered it, and it cooked a lot faster on the cover. If we had left it here on the Santa Maria, it would have took a much longer time. So we put it on the PK, let it cook almost all the way, and then we put it here on the Santa Maria just to finish off, get a little bit of that charcoal flavor, and we're gonna slice it up and feed it to everybody. Well, there it is, folks, as you see, Wild pork can be just as versatile as the stuff you get at the store. You just got to give it a little bit more attention. Let's awesome. give it a little taste test, awesome. y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Sweet. Woo, it's mm -hmm. got a good sweet mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. There it is. If you haven't already, please subscribe, like this video, click the notifications bell down below so you know when we put out a new one. We'll see y'all next time. All right, y'all. Peace out.